Okay. So I'm Tim Calvert and welcome to this special audio description association Zoom session entitled The Creative Process. Hang on, just letting people in. Where we will examine and discuss a different approach to audio description with the help of Dan Parr and Dan Coppin from Here the Picture, a new actor led audio description company whose ambition is to push boundaries of creative access in theatre. The session will end promptly at 11.45 a.m. and be split into four sections, how it all began, training, the process, and where do, and where do we go from here. Each section will be around 15 minutes, and you also have the opportunity to make comments or ask a question at the end of each section. And we do encourage discussion throughout, so please do contribute if you have something to say. So without further ado, I'm going to kick off and if we can have some quick introductions. So when I say your name, um, if you can just say who you are and what you've been up to recently in a sentence or two. So we'll kick off with Roz. Hello, Roz. Hi. Hello, um, I'm an audio describer. I've been describing for about 20 years plus. Um, I work in mainstream theatre, but I also work in film and television. I work in dance um, all across the board, really, I think most of us do. Um, and what I've been doing lately, really, is doing quite a lot of streaming. I've been streaming over Zoom uh, and I've been streaming um, with uh, other production companies and also writing descriptions for digital theatre. Excellent. We'll go over to Mark now. Mark. Hello, Mark. Hello there, Tim. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, Hello, Mark. Mark. Hi, 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 everyone. Yeah, um, I'm from Vision Norfolk in, in Norwich. Uh, I've got my colleague Helen here with me in the office. Um, we take groups to our local theatre for audio described performances. And we've recently just had a really good experience when we took a group to see uh, Merlin at, at ballet and had some really good experience working with a couple of describers from Vocalize. Um, so we had, had some in, interesting experiences with that one. Um, and we, we're kind of getting used to the new way of audio description and doing insight talks rather than having the traditional touch tours. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Over to Ruth now. Hello, Ruth. Hello. I too, like Roz, have been a describer for a while, not quite as long, but since 2007 and describe all sorts of things and have recently in the last year started doing streaming and digital work as well. Excellent, thank you Ruth. Welcome. And over to Barbara now. Hello Barbara. Sorry, just having trouble unmuting myself. Um, yes, I'm, I'm one of the regular team at Sheffield Theatres. Um, I've been describing for about five years and um, lately, uh, well, uh, you may know at Sheffield Theatres, there, there are three theatres, the Lyceum, the Crucible and uh, the Studio. And um, lately the regular team has just been doing the touring productions at the Lyceum and the odd productions at, in the studio with the main house descriptions being done by Hear the Picture usually, yeah. Excellent. And Joe now. Hello, Joe. Morning, everyone. Joe Myers here. Um, yes, I've been a, 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 mainly a vocalised uh, audio describer for about 20 years. Um, since lockdown, moving into streaming and film work. I have a film on at the moment. I am touring with Merlin and uh, will be touring with Gatsby and Casanova um, with, with Northern Ballet. And I'm delighted that there are a number of uh, live shows back in the theatre. To, to keep me busy. Excellent, thank you, Joe. Hello to Pat. Hi, Pat. Hi, I'm Pat. I'm based at Blackpool Grand Theatre, so I haven't been doing anything with them uh, the whole time during lockdown. They had mainly one nighters and things that when they have opened up. Uh, but I have got the one panto coming up, and I've got a show in Manchester in a couple of weeks' time. But over the lockdown, I have been working very closely with Showtown, which is the new Museum of Entertainment in Blackpool. Uh, and I've been working on their access panel. And I've also done some audio description for uh, people like Galloway's. Excellent. Thank you, Pat. And Paula now. 
Hello, Paula. Hi, Tim. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Paula. It's, it's Paula. I'm from Milton Keynes and I'm visually impaired audience member for audio described performances. Excellent. Thank you, Paula. Alice now. Hello, Alice. Hi. Um, I'm based in Leeds um, and I work at Opera North and so I audio describe for them and for other places around the north. Um, and we've recently had um, uh, Carmen, uh, large groups coming to Carmen, which is going on tour. Um, and I'm really interested as well in um, uh, pre-recorded uh, audio description for the Opera North tours when we go to concert halls where they don't have the equipment. Um, and things are semi-staged or surtitled, so it's like using audio description to, to give the audience the story and the text as well. Excellent, thank you, Alice. L L Louise now. Hello, Louise. I think you're on mute, Louise. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yes, I'm, I'm based in the Newcastle Theatres and uh, We've just started, I've had a couple of shows, one at Live Theatre and one at Northern Stage, so it's all starting up again, it's great. And I've also started doing some scripts for the Baltic Art Centre. Oh, right. That's it, they're just uh, starting that up, so, yeah. Excellent, Good. thank you. <laughs> thank you, Louisa. Over to Jane now. Hello, Jane. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, I'm Jane Devoy. I, um, I've been describing um, for film and TV for the the last two or three years um but i've been a filmmaker for longer than that and um i'm really interested in integrated audio description into the creative process so this would be really great to hear about this talk um i'm working on a short film at the moment which um i've integrated audio description right from the start from the screenwriting and through the production and and now i'm in the post-production stages so um yeah that's all very interesting and relevant <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Jane. Over to Mo now. Hello, Mo. It's great to have you with us. Hello, um, my name's uh, Mo Pickering Signs. I'm with the Derby Audio Describers and I also describe freelance as Audio Mo. I work mainly in live theatre, have done for 10 years and have recently got more into film uh, audio, uh, like dance videos particularly. And um, I'm very chuffed because we have three pantos on in the Derbyshire area this Excellent. year. So things are finally cranking back up to speed. It is. Excellent. Thank you, Mo. Now over to Megan. And it must be really early in America right now. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, it, it is 5.40 a.m. in the U.S. right now. So... <laughs> My camera is going to go off in just a minute uh, <laughs> in case I yawn through the whole thing. No offense, anyone. Um, I have actually been doing something interesting and new this week. I have been training a group from different uh, galleries and museums on written image description to add to their websites and their museum labels and their socials. So that has been a little bit new for me, but that's been 10, 10 different galleries and museums. So that was fun. Well, it's great to have you here so early for you as well. And we're over to Sarah now. Hello, Sarah. Good morning. Hi, everyone. My name's Sarah. I work at Sadler's Wells Theatre. Um, I'm not actually an audio describer, but I manage their access programme. Oh, well, it's great to have you here. And hello to Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, okay. I'm, I'm Jane. I'm an audio describer, mostly in theatre, also some film. And looking forward to this morning. Excellent. Thank you, Jane. And over to Anna now. Hello, Anna. Hello, everyone. I'm Anna. I was an audio describer for His Majesty's Theatre in Aberdeen between 2011 and 2015. Then I moved down to Northumberland um, and I couldn't find a theatre to work with here. Uh, then I was overseas for seven years, but I did help a Northumberland company create what I guess was an integrated audio description. I helped them write the script so that what we would usually do as an audio describer was there said by the characters. And I have a panto here in Northumberland this December. So I'm really excited about that. Excellent. Thank you, Anna. So many thanks to everyone for that. So now over to Dan and Darren. We'll start by talking about how their audio description 
actually differs and how it all began. Hi guys, uh, so I'm Dan, uh, I'm an actor and audio describer for Hear the Picture. Um, so basically what, what, we, what we're interested in as a company is um, having more of um, an objective view, um, oh no, sorry, a subjective view on, um, on the play as a describer and having it come from a character's point of view that exists within the world of the piece. Um, so whether that's using accent, emotion, or um, more of a character, it uh, kind of differs dependent on the production that we're describing for. Yeah. Uh, Darren, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Darren. I'm one fourth of Hear the Picture. Um, <laughs> I've actually been in Chester um, doing six months uh, with Storyhouse. Um, doing their rep season there. So I've not really had much chance to do um, a lot of work uh, with Hither Picture, but um, I heard they've been doing some amazing stuff. So I'm really looking forward to um, your feedback on this as well. Cool. So, um, yeah, I suppose we'll just kind of start with a little bit of an introduction about how we began as a, <laughs> as a company. Um, so there's, like Darren said, um, he's a quarter, I'm a quarter, and there's two other describers that we have. Uh, Joe Mosley and Tessa Parr um, and we sort of all kind of met each other uh, at Leeds Playhouse in 2018. Um, we were all hired as um, actors to work across an ensemble season there um, while the two main theatres were shut and they created a pop-up space in their um, workshop uh, and yeah we, we sort of did six plays across 10 months and uh, the first play we did was um, Road um, which I think someone just said they were describing for Northern Stage, so I'm sure they were. Um, they might have been describing for that production that they're doing there at the moment. Um, so the interesting thing about that particular production is that we, as actors, were asked to describe in character while the play was was going on. So I don't know how if anyone knows much about Road as a um, as a play, um, but it's it's quite kind of fairly uniquely sort of set up in in regards to how it's structured. So uh, there's a, a very the various different vignettes from different characters throughout. Um, so usually on the stage at one time, there's on, there's only one or two or maybe sometimes four characters, um, and they'll be doing monologues and direct address to the audience. Um, so it kind of left a lot of actors who were free at the at the time when other actors were on stage doing their kind of monologues. Uh, and what the director's idea was, was to set up um, a telephone box on the side of the stage. Um, and if you weren't performing at that time as your character, um, you could go in to the telephone box as a character, pick up the phone and have a direct feed to the audience and describe what was happening on stage in your character. Um, so as actors, obviously this was like totally brand new to us. We hadn't really had much of an experience as audio description. I suppose we 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 knew it existed and we knew its purpose, but we'd never kind of had like thought about it other than that. So I suppose that sort of straight away started started us asking questions as like, why aren't we more involved in this? Why aren't the describers more involved in the creative process? Um, so that was kind of where the idea came from. Um, and how it worked was in rehearsals, we had a describer called Vicky Ackroyd and we had a visually impaired artist, director and actor called Ben Wilson, um, who were in rehearsals and helped us develop our description throughout the whole rehearsal period, um, which is, again is something I'd, I don't think had, it might have been done a few times, but it's very rare to have the describer in from the start of the process and to be in rehearsals throughout the process. Um, so yeah, we felt like that kind of, allows allowed the description to develop really kind of uh, in line with with the um, production and and um, yeah we had really good reactions from it from everyone that listened in to that particular production um, and it was really fun to do as well and I suppose the reason that worked was because the audience met our characters throughout the production so when when we came on to describe it wasn't there wasn't a big kind of introduction of our character because they'd already been met on stage at some point during the show um so it wasn't too much of a kind of grasp for the for the listener or the user um to understand who was describing at that time and um and things like that so it was um so yes yeah, so that was kind of how it was born 
And then, um, yeah, Darren, do you have anything to say about? Well, it was just, I was going to say, to be honest with you, it was actually quite stressful um, because <laughs> we wanted, you know, we know that it's a very important thing, um, you know, this accessibility. And we didn't really know what was right and what was wrong, to be honest. Um, and a lot of the times in the play, there are a lot of comedic moments mm -hmm. and there are a lot of dark moments as well. And it's kind of getting that balance, really, of, you know, not overstepping too much as a character and overtaking what's going on on stage so you really had to have um you know a balance of you know how funny that you could be um you know how sensitive that you needed to be um in you know a lot of different scenes so for me it was just really interesting to bring a new lease of life really to what was going on on stage and what people could could hear because you know what was great is that we got a lot of feedback um from that and they said that you know you had a lot of people laughing that had the audio description and, and some people who obviously weren't involved in that were just kind of wondering what the hell was going on because you know it was almost like these other people had a had a, another another story um you know that they were listening to and i just thought that that was a really great thing to kind of keep on pushing with, really. I don't think so. Did, did anyone did anyone have any questions or anything just about uh, or anything to say just about what what we've discussed so far in, in that regard? No. Um, have you tried Have you tried it with the whole audience um, hearing the AD rather than just the people with the headsets? Um, not as of yet. I mean, we, we are a fairly new company, so I suppose what we're doing is just is just kind of um, at the moment is just is trying to ex experiment with 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 mm -hmm. that. I mean, we would we would love like we we were a totally open book. Like if we were offered that kind of um, that kind of work, we would we would definitely grasp that with with two hands. Um, I know that like Amy, who directed Road, uh, she's just recently directed the latest Ramps on the Moon project, uh, which was Oliver Twist. And uh, that script was a new script and the writer uh, integrated the audio description into the script. So, yeah, that so if you are a, a user of audio description, you could go to that performance and not have to use a headset. And um, through the script, um, the description would exist for for the user. So it's um, so that kind of thing is being being worked, but it's not something that we've experienced as of yet as a company. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, I suppose like the next the next step was like through Ben Wilson. Oh, sorry, Joe. Have you Joe, Joe got a question? Oh yeah, go go. Oh uh, yeah, and the, the, I think Louise also had one. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, go ahead, Joe. Okay, it's, it sounds fascinating. Always in the back of my mind as someone who's been doing it a long time, and obviously Ros in, is in the room, and others who are colleagues. That little warning bell says, "Ooh, overkill of information." Yes. Um, uh, I wondered whether you had had positive or other feedback uh, because the brain can only assimilate so much information. And I'm Quite just right. Um, it's it's you know we're great innovative ideas and, and good on you, but um, there are constraints and boundaries so that the user can maximise and get the information um, that they need. Just a comment, really. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think that we completely respect. Uh, the traditional way of audio describing and um, that's always going to be there and we structure as well mm. um, what we do um, for certain productions mm. so there are you know certain productions like musicals and things like that where a lot of that creative process works really really well um, and like you said sometimes that has been um, a struggle for us of knowing how much information we actually you know can give without it being kind of mm. overloading people as well um, and I think we're still you know we're still gauging that at the moment as a company we're still gauging that through mm. through productions through characters and mm. things like that and you know you only you only know those things through experience you know and as you go mm. and, and getting the feedback from audience and members feedback you know, from the users mm. really exactly. important to, to keep monitoring that yeah, yeah exactly. I think yeah. I think I think a road as a production was kind of it's kind of been like a, a one-off in in that respect. I know I think 
Grey Eye did a, sim a similar thing with a, with a phone box for one of their productions before that, and that was where the idea came from. Um, <clears throat> but I suppose what, what we found, what we find as well is a really useful tool, tool is the introductory notes. And as long as something is set up there, um, in that in that time period before it allows your character to be introduced when there's actually nothing happening on stage so then when you actually go into the description the user would is already used to who's describing who you are and, 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 and the world that they're existing in so I suppose that's always what we found going forward from Ro because we haven't had quite had as an experience that's as integrated as as that where there's lots of different characters describing all the time. Usually it comes from two voices um, and they're, like I said, they're set up and introduced during the introductory notes. We find that actually what's useful, for example, with, with Gin Craze, which we just recently did at Northampton, it's a really good example as in that production, you kind of have the aristocracy and you have the working class. So you very simply that was set up that at me as a describer, I used I used to receive pronunciation and quite like a well articulated voice to describe the locations when they were in the palace and when they were in the um, houses of the upper class. And Joe was then just use a, a Cockney accent and a kind of like more working class accent when they were describing locations that were in the gin gin dives and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that was all set up within the introductory notes when you were introducing yeah, characters that were in. That were in the gin dives you used joe was just described them and when we were kind of setting up setting up in the locations and the places we went to and the characters who were more upper class than i described them and then that was a theme that ran throughout the production so i suppose like that's that's a, that's sort of a technique that we've learned that we can use those notes at the start to kind of set up who we are and and, and which sections and locations and characters we would be describing and also quickly just to add to that so um we for our training a little bit about the training beforehand we did um sort of an exam on the life of pi um, which started at sheffield and which is now in the west end and that is an amazing vibrant um, production with so much that's going on actually we found that really 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 hard to describe um for one of our sort of first sort of tests to do that and um that we found because i'm from a you know south um Indian heritage as well thought what might be quite nice is that it's set in this Indian world and um because we wanted to obviously keep the atmosphere and really have that tension and what was going on in the play it's like you said we didn't want to overcook it so my narration that I did was almost just very very subtle narration that I was doing in a South Indian accent um just to keep into that world of the play so like I was saying there there are you know there are shows which you know that to be to be constantly you know this character and saying quite a lot wouldn't work at all but then you sort of cater that towards the world and the play which you're describing mm -hmm. yeah. Ross, you had a question Ross. Um, it sounds beautifully playful actually it sounds like um they're getting a a really different kind of experience uh, two questions um, first one is, one of, one of the things that we, we learn as describers is not to impose the description on people. Yes. So I think that's something that we would have to do a sort of a slight 360, um, because our aim is to people to get the information without almost being aware of how they do it. And I often give um, an example of uh, Black Watch, which I think Carolyn Smith described in London. That John and, Tiffany. Sorry? John Tiffany directed that. That's right. Oh, so, yeah. There was that there was um with with that one, there was one uh piece where there was um an IUD and there was an explosion and everybody was blown around. These people that you've got to know very well were killed. And afterwards, somebody said to the describer, Thank goodness you didn't describe that, because that really would have been <laughs> yeah. awful fact, to have somebody's voice. Yeah. Well, of course she did, otherwise she wouldn't have got that information. So I, for, for us, that, that's a sort of got it moment um, that, that people have gone away without it. What it seems to, to me is, is that in some cases, your people, your, your audience is getting a very different experience. They're getting their own story. They're getting Easter eggs almost. Yes. Getting their own story and their own experience. And it's really created. It's a creative thing with, with audio description in mind. And I think that's slightly different from integrated description, which, which is, as you say, 
written around the play. The play is being produced and that the integration is, is written in so that the characters are actually speaking it, which of course frees people up from these ghastly headphones. Um, whereas when you've, got, when you've got a character, I'd like to know um, what story you were telling as a character in Road, for example. I mean, I used to, you, said, you said it's quite subjective. Um, your yes. character has relationships with those other people around. And how, are you, are you an unreliable narrator? Are you a reliable narrator? Are you a say it what you see narrator? Just be interested in know what, how you handle that. Yeah, so I suppose with Road, we, we, was, we were all different characters. And like you said, you meet those characters throughout the production and you find out about them through monologues that they give to the audience. So when those people then pop into the phone box and start describing, you kind of have an idea of what, who that person is anyway from what they've they've said. Um, so it's just, I suppose that that does leave it up to the um, the user to kind of make a decision on on that character. But we've written it from that character's perspective, who is describing another character on stage. Who, who they might not have a relationship with or they might know of, or they might have a relationship and they might know of and they might meet each other throughout the play. And I suppose it was more of a, like an experiment and a test to see if, if, if that works and if that, is, if that still delivers the same kind of uh, access that um, a traditional description would as well, but also immerses the character more, in, more immerses the listener more into that, into that place, that time and that road, you know? So that that was the experiment with that. And I suppose, like I said, and I'll explain as we as, as I kind of move through our journey, we haven't come up against a production where we've had that in that much intense character work on a on a thing. What what we find now with our dis descriptions, like I said, is 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 more of like either using the same accent within within the just to just to so the so and not necessarily describing in the introductory notes who we are as characters but just using an accent so we still so it feels like we live in that world that they're that they're experiencing um and just having and also just offering a little bit of opinion from from you as a character not having not let i suppose because we are what we're interested in is working with the director and working with the actors as well is is kind of like a from what's happening in that in that room of rehearsals is allowing ourselves to then offer opinions which which is which is also kind of the direction the director would like the show to would like the audience to experience the show in any way so we feel that there's an allowance for us to add a bit more subject subject subjectiveness really than, than it, it, yeah it's, it's just thought. it's yeah. finding space really isn't it it's actually finding space yeah because and negotiating space if you're in the room yeah. You get an opportunity to negotiate space because you say, actually, I have to clarify this. Actually, this is a really nice moment. If I had three more seconds, I could get it in. Are yeah. you able to make that kind of well, that's, intervention? That, that's the thing that we've come up against as describers is like, is, is space like, do you just let things play out as they as they do because actually you're going to in, you're going to intrude on on what's being experienced or do you, or can you find space to to fit things in there was an interesting one from typical girls which um Tess and Joe recently described at Sheffield Crucible it's like it's a clean bake production it was all about um, a female prison and a punk rock band within the female prison and there was so much going on noise with bands and like movement on stage while people were speaking and singing that they were like how do we describe what's happening um, so they set up something in the introductory notes which was quite interesting where they they had a symbol and they said when we clash this symbol that means that everyone is moving around the stage extremely frantically and that was just a quick a quick thing which then allowed them to not intrude on what was what was being sort of heard on stage but also gave the gave the viewer and like a, an idea that that there was a lot of movement going on and there was a lot of do you know what I mean so I suppose it's experimenting with little techniques like that as well which which we find um, we're, we're trying to sort of discover as we move forward as well and as, and as we know as well that you know when you're describing something the, the actor isn't always going to say the same thing exactly at the same time so you, know, you might think that you've had two seconds and oh, I've, I've got two seconds to, to kind of you know to get this in and then all of a sudden you know you're doing it and it's it's come five seconds before and you're like oh um so I mean that's quite unpredictable in itself isn't it to try and bloody mm. actors yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what we found what we found with like Vicky's training which was one of the, the mantras we live by is like if in doubt just don't just don't describe because you don't want to stomp on top of, of yeah. the story you don't so that was one of the things that we hold like 
very as like a very close thing it's like as much as we were really keen to like get everything out it's like you've just got to go you've got to let it happen sometimes if there's not space there's not there's not space um but yeah but but like i said exploring ideas of, of how you can use other noises and sounds and different techniques to 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 give a bigger description in a really short kind of moment is, is something we're interested in as well right shall we go on to the next section which was training down <laughs> so yeah so um we through ben wilson who is an agent for change at uh, sheffield crucible so um, I don't know if you guys know much about Ramps on the Moon. They're a collection of uh, six professional um, theatres. Um, so you've got, let me just get my notes, you've got the New Wolsey in Ipswich, Birmingham Rep, Royal Stratford East, Nottingham, Playhouse Leeds, Playhouse Sheffield Theatres and Grey Eye are also a partnership. And their commitment as theatres was to make one show a year and for that show to tour around to all the venues. And they, those... Um, those shows would have a mixture of disabled and non-disabled actors and have integrated BSL and integrated audio description. Um, and each theatre has an agent for change. So that's um, a director or someone connected to the theatre industry in some way who has a disability that goes into that theatre and tries to implement uh, access changes to, to that theatre throughout their time there. So Ben was the agent for change at Sheffield. He was very interested in working with us um, from Road and from the idea that we came up with and he applied for a project grant through Ramps and the Moon. We got some money and we paid Vicky Ackroyd to train us as audio describers. Um, so th the training was really interesting. It was over a week. And what she did was she trained us traditionally, but every time we'd done an exercise on traditional training, she would then ask us to do the same uh, exercise, but to try and add character or to try and hear the picture up a little bit. Um, and this was when we discovered that it doesn't always work, that sometimes being too much of a character is too overpowering and therefore it's just about giving hints that the or emotion or accent or something to to kind of give the describer more placement within the world that's that, that we're trying to do um we're, we're audio describing in the show so so that was that was what we found through the training and then like darren said before our, our exam piece was Life of Pi at Sheffield Crucible, where we were locked in a room for two days with a computer trying to uh, trying to describe some of the most visual theatre I've ever seen in my life. And if any of you have a chance to see it at the West End, it's probably one of the most amazing theatre productions I've ever seen. They use projection mapping, so the floor is like constantly changing from this kind of like um, clinical hospital setting. Then it goes into the sea, the boat raises up from the floor, you know, like there's puppets of animals everywhere and you're just thinking oh it's it's like used to was like how are you better describe that some this big store you know big storm that goes on this whole ship collapses and you're just like it, it's amazing it's it's an absolute spectacle but it was a real challenge for us to to describe it um and then from there we kind of like we passed or whatever and we launched our our company um at the end of 2019 to guys and dolls at sheffield and um, we invited um people from the national and different directors and things like that and they came uh to to watch and we got really good feedback and then the crucible asked us to direct three of the next uh shows there in-house um but then unfortunately due to covid it all kind of halted our first one was due to be coriolanus um and then it all kind of halted um i've got an example of some of our of our description which i'd be interested to have your opinion on it's only such a small snippet from um from what we did at guys and dolls and it's something that we use to kind of market our company at the moment so i'm just gonna share the screen and just play a little bit and um see what you think do, do, do. We are Hear the Picture. We are an actor-led audio description company experimenting creatively with different forms of audio description. We want to take you on an immersive journey and bring you into the world of the show using character, accent or even just emotion. Here's an example from our audio description for Guys and Dolls at Sheffield Crucible. The scene takes place in a cabaret bar. 
Dancers laced with white feathers flood the room. High-heeled hens we have here, ladies and gents. Huge feather fans in hand sit on back and waggle. The most glamorous birds in Manhattan. We want to be a bridge from the stage to your imagination. We want you to know that we are pushing the boundaries of theatre creatively, just for you. We are Hear the Picture. Okay, so I'd be interested if anyone had, I know it's a really small snippet, um, but yeah, if anyone had any like comments or anything to say just about, about that, because I think what that kind of shows is, one, Guys and Dolls, set in New York, it's a very New York accent. And then also to describe kind of like these showgirls that come on with big sort of feather fans and are dancing. And it just kind of gives you a snippet of that. So yeah, if anyone had anything, any comments or any than that? Can I ask? I liked it. I thought it was really good. Oh, great. <laughs> Can I ask Paul that? Have you, um, as a user going to the theatre, have you got any opinions or any ideas around how you how you feel about the difference, you know, between traditional and this form of audio description? Uh, I was trying to unmute myself while you were talking. <laughs> Um, I think you were asking me if I'd experienced stuff like that and how I felt about it. Um, I, I, um, I was <laughs> asking how you felt about the difference, perhaps, between traditional and this form of audio description. Well, yeah, that little snippet was the only bit <laughs> <only laughs> I heard. So um, I've been trying to imagine it as as they've been talking. Um, uh, I'd certainly really like to experience it. I quite liked the little snippet. Um, Guys and Dolls is my favourite show ever. And if oh. you liked it, I would have been really upset. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I liked that. I, 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 I kind of question, was the person talking, was that a genuine accent or was that an accent that was being put put on for the production. oh no no that was tessa that was um she she's from leeds so that was an accident right. really, but... <laughs> I, thought, I thought thought that and um yeah i i suppose because i am used to hearing like an english voice um describing mm. no matter what the production is and obviously i have seen guys and girls with, with all the american accents and in a way i quite like an ordinary very flat that's not to be rude but mm. an english voice because it's a definite description if you know what i mean it 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 it, it takes the description out of the thing but i know what you're trying to do you're trying to put it into it so i i need to get my head around yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i think i think that i, I think like you know in no way at all we trying to like say this is the way that we need to be done. I think I think it's just like exploring audio description. Like I like to think of it as like an art form. It's like going, there could be loads of different strands of it. And like, why not like explore and try out different ways? And it might not be for everyone, but some people might like, you know, prefer either or have an opinion. So that's that's all like, but yeah, I I think, you know, if that's if that's how you like it to be separate, like um we know like that's all experienced to be mm. fair you know, but it's it, because that's what I've experienced and I'm thinking particularly on the tv it's obvious uh, yeah. to me when the description's coming in and when it's when it's when it's an actor do you know what I mean it's yeah it, it, and and that that's all I'm used to so I would have to come and experience that properly and get my head around it um and and and, I, and it's been very interesting, you know. I I I'm, I'm not saying one's right and one's wrong at all. I'm just yeah. saying this is what I'm used to, so I'm having to change my mindset just yeah. to understand what you where you're coming from. Roz, you have a a comment question. I've I've struggled with that a little bit because there were a lot of things that were that I was having to listen to. I was having to listen to the accent. I was having to listen to. Um, a narration which was inviting me in 
um, when I was trying to understand what the description was getting. And I was also struggling a little bit with thinking, is it really glamorous? Because my knowledge of, of um, guys and dolls is that this is a seedy little Kit Kat bar. <laughs> you know, and it's, 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 you know, so, so I'm going, okay, if I, I mean, everybody's, everybody's sort of hustling on the side, you know, they, they, they walk the streets at night, they dance, and, you know, they dance yeah, yeah. in the evening. Um, yeah. So I get, I, I was getting a little bit of so much to do with that. And I wonder mm-hmm. how, how well I'd be able to stain it for two hours. Yeah, I, th- I think I think the, the the what I would say to that is um, is like get used the, to it. <laughs> in, no, the introductory notes are our friend. Like if you're a list, if you're a, are, yes. a user, you're going to get used to that voice in that first half an hour, twenty minutes when you're listening to the introductory notes. And I think regardless of accent or anything, like you'll get used to, to the voice that's delivering the description within mm. that that time and then therefore when you're going through the play you it I, I feel and from the feedback we've had it it would be more obvious when when it's describing and when it's going on stage i think it to take that section out of context and just deliver it was more of an example of like of, of our description but i think in the the context of the whole thing i i feel like it, it can work and i think like you said the introduction notes are are our friends you can set up all that kind of information about how seedy it is and everything within 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 the start and and then you can you can have an opinion on it throughout the throughout the throughout the piece you know and I think in that particular production as well they, they were glamorous there was oh really it was, um, <laughs> the, the actual set the actual section of music we weren't allowed to use from guys and dolls because of um because of for rights reasons so that was like a a stop that- jazz music but that was bushel and the peck that was bushel and the peck yeah, yeah that's yeah. bushel and the peck which yeah. was um yeah it, it, it was it was um i knew it was bushel and the peck <laughs> yeah it was it was because you gave me hens yeah because exactly. you gave me hens and then yeah i'd probably yeah. probably gone chickens but you know but then there'd be time <laughs> yeah. hens um but yeah. they because it because so because it, it's close to chicks so yeah. you know it's it's that kind of that kind of nuance i think that, that comes in yeah. i mean i, I think there was a little bit of a lack of flow to the delivery, which I'd have liked mm. to have here. It felt a little bit choppy. Yeah, um, I suppose that's possibly other... because you're thinking about the accent as well. Well, the, the, the other reason that is, is because that was recorded in a studio post the description. Ah, uh, right. So it, it, so it stop, wasn't you're not actually doing it live. the live, the live yeah. description either. So yeah. that was that was a section we particularly liked for Matt and we thought we could we could use that as an as an example. And we recorded that in a in a booth. So yeah, so if it did feel like that, that could also be the reason. Yeah, that, I'm 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 yeah. well open to this. I really yeah. am. But I just I just think you know I'm I'm I I know Vicky very well. I trained her, so um, oh, wow. <laughs> and she's fantastic. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I, I I have every faith in, in anything that Vicky has, has done with you. But yeah, um, yeah it, it's it would it would take I I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I think in my introductory notes, I would like to have some kind of warning that the, 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 yeah. you know, this is this is not your tradition. Yes, yeah. this, you know, this is something that's going to really invite you in. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just move on to um, our. No, no, it's, it's not move on from that. It, it follows on. Definitely. Is to add is to start going through the process that we've developed up to up to now through through just work just trying things out and working and I suppose it is all kind of experimental and kind of like very sort of uh, worked on d- d- dependent on the on the production that we're, we're doing um, and one of those warnings that you just kind of suggested is we do an we do an audio flyer which I don't know I don't actually know if they're done like an accessible flyer for. Um, for traditional audio description whether that's something you guys offer but we thought that that's another another time like pre the play where you can set up you know characters and the kind of voices so i'm going to show you the one from um northampton we did which was for gin craze uh, which was a, a sort of female-led production actor mus- musician production um, and it was all about the women of gin lane when they were kind of setting up these gin dives and making their own gin and um, kind of based loosely around Hogarth's picture of Gin Lane and then how kind of the upper class and the aristocracy tried to, you know, put in these big kind of like laws to, to stamp that out. And it was an amazing production, but again, it kind of, the I think the audio fly kind of shows the, the levels that me and Joe were playing with in regards to like the upper class and the working class throughout it. So I'll just play that and see what you guys think. Um, 
And so begins the campaign to stamp out the vice of gin. In the future, no one will have ever heard of it. <laughs> Divine Ginever, ladies delight. I'd like to see you try. There's a story that shouldn't be forgotten of the gin drinking women of Gin Lane. Lawless sinners! Oh, scratch off! What would you know? A tale of two lovers who rolled the dice and paid the price. Gin Craze, written by April De Angelis and Lucy Rivers. An anarchic, ingenious and irreverent new musical. A booze-soaked ballad from the women of Hogarth's Gin Lane at the Royal and Derngate, Northampton. Audio described performance on Wednesday, July 28th at 7.30pm. Quote the discount code GINCRAZE21, capital G, I, N, capital C, R, A, Z, E, 21, for 25% off tickets for the audio described performance. To buy tickets, please call box office on 01604 624 811 or visit the website www.royalanddurngate.co.uk. So that's an example of kind of how we want to market our productions. Um, and we work with the marketer team on that. And for example, with Northampton, we looked at the NAB, which is their local um, visually impaired charity and society. And we sent stuff to them. And we've also kind of got in contact with RNIB and stuff as well. And um, Tim's also said like the sort of talking newspapers and the kind of really good marketing place. So we, we're going to try and like get in touch with them, I suppose, going forward as well. Um, but yeah, so, so our kind of process is how we start is we, as actors, I suppose we kind of we kind of know the idea of a rehearsal process and how it's structured and what happens throughout it. And I, we find that that's quite a useful tool as describers when we're trying to get in on the important sections, which we find will be useful as, as describers. The first day of rehearsal is like, is, is massively important for us. And we feel that that should be the case for all, for all describers. Um, on that day, what happens is everyone from the creative process comes in. So you have the director, the designer, the sound, sound every, everyone's in the room. There's a read through of the of the uh, play, which is obviously great to, to hear it alive straight away, even though you won't start describing until writing your description until you see, see it on the stage. It's an idea of getting, you know, you get an idea of voices and decisions and, and actors. Also, it's a really great time to introduce, your, to introduce yourself as well and raise awareness. Like with Road, which we said before, like as actors, when we were asked to do it, we didn't really kind of know, we knew what it was and what the purpose was, but we feel like raising awareness of it within like the acting community and the and like the, the kind of creative community is, is like, it's really important. Um, so, so people know what's going on and that it's, that it's on, on like that it's happening. Um, and then also we feel like it's really important to, make a communication with the designer uh, in the, on that day there's a model box showing so they show you a small set version of the set and they sort of talk the designer also talks through initial costume ideas and um, which are obviously things that that we're going to be describing and we find that like making a connection with the designer maybe getting a contact for them is really useful because as much as you kind of see from when you watch it on stage and, and like when you when you're doing your description you're watching the recorded version if you have a direct communication with the designer you can find out about their inspirations where they've taken their ideas from to create these costumes also like the intricate detail of the costumes you could also get contact details for from the actual costume department and as actors we know as we go through rehearsals we get we try things on and we have pictures taken and if you can get access to those pictures you know that gives you like a really close up picture of the actor in the costume when you're not kind of watching them moving around on stage and you can really use that to help in your introductory notes your description so we feel being present on that first day is like it's like it's like num number one important thing is like get in there tell everyone about who you are and start making like connections and then obviously you go away and you let the rehearsal process kind of take its course but in that time is when you kind of start communicating with like it with um people about the audio flyer so you can get in contact with sound use sound from the show put that behind it <clears throat> and also you on like occasion you can get some of the actors sometimes to record themselves speaking to use for the audio flyer 
you can get that out and get that marketed <laughs> and then um I'd like, like to know about descriptions as well about um how actors would like to be described a lot of the time um mm -hmm. because there have been on occasion um i've not been happy actually with a way that a describer has described me on stage, um, to, especially to do with my ethnicity um, and who I am. And I think rep representation for me personally, um, and for a lot of people actually on stage is a really, really important thing. And sometimes it, it can be quite awkward to, you know, maybe go up to an actor and say, how would you like to be represented? Um, but I know that there are a lot of actors um, who like to be represented very differently. Um, especially when it comes to ethnicity, culture and heritage. Um, and that for me is really, really important. Um, and that to be represented on stage is, is important as well um, for a lot of people. So we like to, you know, um, just give, give the actors a chance um, to, you know, describe themselves how, how they would like to be perceived on stage. And it's not, you know, a, a huge thing. It's, we don't want, you know, kind of, pages and pages of, of how they would like to be described, but just the important things really that they would like to pick out. Mm. Yeah, that's another thing. We send off a, a thing to all the actors an email, just asking them to, to write a short description themselves, which is mainly, yeah, like Darren said, to do with like race, size, um, like heritage. And it just gives them an opportunity to kind of like pick the language that they want they, they would prefer to use to describe them because a lot of those things can be very personal to the actors. So it, we feel like it's important that that comes from them and um, just gives them kind of like the, the power in, in, in that regard. So that's something, again, we're experimenting with, which we kind of feel is, is really important is to allow them to write a short description themselves, which we then take and use in our introductory notes. Um, yeah, and then I suppose like all the kind of work I oh, was just going to say, um, Vocalize have a questionnaire that most of us use uh, in some form or other that we send to all the actors that has exactly okay. those questions all neatly yeah. put in. Sort of, you know, how would you like to be described? How do you think of yourself? What does your character think? Is there a difference between, you know, all that sort of thing? That's just brilliant. to reassure you, we do try and think of that. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, that, that's brilliant. I mean, we weren't saying that that that's not I suppose that that's not done we were just saying that that's something we've developed but yeah we feel like that's a very important thing but that's great that, that, that that's happening elsewhere as well that's, that's really good um yeah can I, just, can I just add on that note um building on from that um what I've decided to do this year for the panto I'm doing is asking the actors to record it on a phone so that the audience get to know their voice oh, as well and so great. then I'll knit the little uh, audio yeah. clip of them saying you know so they can say my I'm Rob I'm white male in my 50s I'm a bit overweight but I wouldn't be able to say that but uh, you know and, and ethnicity and everything you say but then they can describe their character and even put on their character's voice so that the uh, visually impaired audience can get to know it and start differentiating That's even great. better yeah I mean yeah brilliant yeah because that is something I've been pushing for for quite a quite a while because I've spoken to a lot of people who of the visually impaired who go to the theatre and I do it on a regular basis and a lot of the feedback I get is that why can't they have the element that they get in a touch tour actually before the show and the introductory notes and why can't they have the actors talking about their characters and actually giving a sample of that voice mm. because then that gives them a bit of a sample then before they go in to the show and they know what they're going to expect so i have had that quite a lot and i aren't quite sure what paula thinks about that if she thinks it would be a great idea or not we can come to her in a moment have you got a question joe well no, just a comment that uh, the unicorn theater the children's theater and young people theater in london uh certainly employ that um i guess it's the logistics isn't it and uh the yeah yeah element of time that's involved financial as well um yeah, yeah. Th these are the practical constraints when there are deadlines and you've got another level it's it's all laudable and wonderful dan it's great you know but there are there are always these snaggy things that you come up against like <laughs> tiny obstacles that get in the way yeah. sometimes yeah I, I suppose that's like mm. that's what we're trying to that's like these boundaries that we speak about that we're trying to break down like 
I think like I think I feel like that that's the stuff we want to like question because otherwise it will always be on the outside and like we want to we want to get it on the inside you know we want it to we want it to be like developed not just by a describer but by like the whole team that are in charge of that show because that is going to give the description it's going to give it it's going to give it like the same world that everyone's working with together that that's so I mean like that's what we're trying to fight for basically and and you know we, we, we're only at the start start of our journey and we might not get anywhere but we're going to give it a good a good go because <laughs> what why not like I just yeah that's where the ideas come from and 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 that's like I suppose what what we're trying to what we're trying to do I mean like with touch tours we would love to do like a touch tour as the character we're describing one and bring people on stage and improvise around the character we'll be using for the description and you know within that world like that's another idea that could could possibly happen in the future we haven't got to that point obviously because of what's happened with coronavirus we haven't been allowed to do the touch tours yet but that is something we're again like thinking about as well to, to for the future and and things like that because they're all they're all moments where we can introduce those voices and those characters which we'll be using for the description so like you know we said at the start it's not too it's not too much for the listener it's not going to um require too much brain power because that person that's that voice has been introduced to them numerous times and touch tours introductory notes you know all that kind of stuff and um, now um has a question go yeah. ahead and mo um actually a suggestion because i always try to interview um performers to find out how they would like to be described but a short run especially of a touring company doesn't always allow for that um so what I sometimes do if I'm very very short of time is um put the ball in their court to get back to me for changes because also I think just oh, you know good. actors and everybody else they're just they're just really really busy and it's like oh here's another thing that's landed on my plate I've got to remember to do this so what I do where possible and if there's time I write my description to the best of my ability and I send it to the touring company or whoever and ask them to share it with the actors. And if anybody is not happy with their description, get back to me because I think they're more likely to have energy to get back and say, I really don't want to be described like that rather than to have the energy to say, oh, well done, I'll send you a little thank you email and everything. <laughs> they're just not going to do it because they're just yeah, working yeah. too hard. They're just too busy. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't know if that's, um, that's, that's helpful, but at least they've had a chance and you've done your best to try and present it to them before, you know, hitting the audience with it. I think that's a, a really, really good idea. We actually haven't attempted to do any touring productions because at the moment we're trying to like, we're trying to get in there from day one and with touring productions, you, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're approaching it. You're going to have a couple of days to write it when it's tech in and things. Yeah. And you're yeah. Yeah. Be doing it. Um, and we feel like. But also, I mean, I, I do also feel that as, as describers, we are constantly in the position of being educators in the nicest way, because even the acting, you know, community don't all know what audio description is about. And the number of times when I've introduced myself as an audio describer to try and get some information from them that they're happy with to feed into my description. And they're like, oh, yes, you do the thing with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think, they think oh, the no, no, that's <laughs> the other guys. They are brilliant, yeah. but we are, the, you know. So uh, if, if you do that and people see a description of themselves, they start to understand what audio description is about for the audience. And it just raises people's awareness a little bit. That's what I think as well. Yeah, definitely. And like, that's, yeah, exactly what, what we want is, and it's part of our thing is to raise awareness. That's what I was saying about like the first day of rehearsal is really important because if you can get in there and introduce yourself and explain what you do, I feel like just you've done it with that company, you do it with the next company and it just, it's going to tip around and, and people are going to start to, be more aware of, of of what's happening in regards to that kind of access i, I think, think that's well, brilliant I, you know? I think as well you you start to feel more of uh, more more of the team like i think with audio describers they, they come in and they have a job and you know they're brilliant but it doesn't seem like they're part of everything um you know it feels like sometimes they're a separate entity to what is going on um and for me i don't think that 
that should be the case. You know, mm -hmm. it should be integrated with everybody and everybody should know, you know, what they do, who you are and what your purpose is. Mm. Do, do you do, do you, the other describes, do you feel that sometimes it's it's a, a fairly lonely job in that respect? Do you feel that like when you're asked to come into a theatre, you don't have much communication with the creative team and you're kind of left to your own devices to write whatever you think is the best for that production. And then you do it, you get your feedback from from your listeners and, and you go, do you, do you find that? Or do you feel like as times like recently, obviously not recently because of coronavirus, but pre that, like were things changing? Were you getting more like, we, one of our sayings that we use is access for access. Like the more access we get, we feel the better the, our access is going to be. And by that access, I mean access to the creative team, to the production, to the play. Do you, do you feel like that that was getting better uh, pre-coronavirus or do you still do, do you feel that it can be quite a lonely a lonely job in the sense that it's left up to you to do what you think is is the best kind of thing I'd be interested to know that no I I'm lucky in that I do organize the access at Opera North so I've now got all my audio describers in from the model box showing and into as many rehearsals as they can fit in and if they live locally you know it, it's it's an it easy is. thing to do but it can be, you know, it's it's time and and different constraints like that. But yeah, they've really appreciated that. And and uh, Vicky, who audio described a dance thing for us recently with Phoenix Dance, she talked to the director, and I've suddenly realised why on earth aren't we all talking to the directors more? Uh, yeah, we sit at the model show, but we don't often sort of interact. But I'm going to make sure from now on that I always make sure that the access providers meet the director and just facilitate that quick conversation at one of the rehearsals, and they get a real insight into the show and we know what era he's setting in or, or she's setting in everything so it makes a big difference yeah brilliant no um to be honest i feel less lonely since the pandemic because of zooms like this that have been oh, set yeah. up and i've actually got to uh, meet more of a range of my fellow describers and hear other people's opinions and and learn their ideas um I'm very lucky because I work in a group in Derby and there are five of us. So I always had colleagues and we think it's best practice to have, if possible, three describers on a show. One for the first half, one for the second half, one for the admin and the pre-show notes. And we all spot for each other, listen for yeah. each other's bloopers <laughs> and um and to let our colleagues kill our favorite darlings you know, to give the best uh, experience for for the listener but um increasingly we've ended up in solo shows working you know working alone um because of logistics and what have you and um it's not i'm i'm not convinced it's the best thing for um for the for the audience or for the describer. The worry about the two-way interaction is that we do a highly skilled job. And I think there's always a balancing act between inviting suggestions and not opening the floodgates for impossible demands. Because yeah. if you got an email back the night before a big show saying, I want you to change this, 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 this. You'd be like, I can't, I can't, it's too late. It's <laughs> yeah, too much. That's, that's so it's, it's also um, about managing the expectations of the, the excellent professionals around us. But um, I do feel that we are less recognised, the more visible um, access support people like, like the signers on stage. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of their show, they always get a, a show and a big, bow and a clap yeah. but that's that has happened for me but it's quite rare that any company of actors gestures up to the back for the audio describers yeah. um, but every time it happens I think oh <laughs> somebody's, um, somebody's got it you know there's an amazing moment recently at the globe um with uh so there's a professor called Hannah Thomas who's been working on something called inclusive AD and this thing called idea and she's working with a number of different theatres one of which being the globe um and yeah they did their inclusive AD for one of the productions I can't remember which one it might have been Roman Juliet you have one of the describers here oh my god was it you was it and the oh, it wasn't me no it wasn't me it was Jane oh, Jane oh. oh right yeah and they got to come on stage and um and bow which is just amazing so yeah 
Did, did you say one of them was here, Jane? Hi. Hi. Could, could I ask a question? Um, yeah, I, I wondered do. if you had any, uh, any conversations with the playwrights and what their, their opinion is of you creating new characters for their perfect work of art. <laughs> uh, well, it depends. I suppose it depends what the play is. If it was a new writings piece, like, yeah, like that would be great because the writer would be in the room from, from the word go. But I suppose um, if it's a, an old play or something which has been done multiple times, then then no. But I suppose it's like it's like the same way as an actor coming in and taking control of a character. The playwright's not always going to have uh, sort of control over what that actor decides. So, um, I mean, like I said, it's it's not necessarily about you know making a character and telling the, the listener exactly who your character is. It's just about it's about a flavour in your description with. With um, with 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 a with, with an either an accent, or an emotion, or like a, just someone who exists in that world. It it doesn't need. To, I don't think the listener needs to know who you are precisely. It just needs to know that your voice is the one describing. And if that voice exists in the world that they're also experiencing, we just feel that, that could you know give them a different experience. You know, it's, that's a, a lot of it as well can be just by use of you know your voice and emotion like mm. Dan was saying it's not a character and it's not you know something like a brand new character that people have to get to know and have their own ideas and opinions um sometimes it's just basically inviting that audience in with storytelling and as actors you know we're, we're great at doing that and it's just having that whether it's just an emotion in your voice whether it's how you tell a story whether it's how you're describing something it's not just done you know, in a very kind of meticulous sort of way. It's actually done sometimes with a bit of heart or, um, yeah, yeah it, it's approached yeah. just slightly differently. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes, um, Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. And we, I think, uh, Vocalise and, and, and other longer serving describers have been trying to do this for years too. Mm. Um, I, having wrestled my way out of out of mute, I thought I'd just uh, loop back to the globe curtain call. I did it to be obliging and I hated every minute of it. <laughs> I didn't feel that I should be there doing that. And part of the reason for that was that all the people in that auditorium had no idea who we were. An actor told to introduce us at the last minute, introduce us as audio signers, if you please. And, um, you right. know, I just thought this is a pointless gesture. I found when the delightful access man told me that the whole board had been there wondering who we were, that there was a point to it after all. But I do say that if we take curtain calls and we go to the front like that, which is not natural for many of us, um, then people need to know what audio description is, or it's a gimmick to have people out there taking a call for something you don't know what they've done. I, th I think it's got to be properly backed up. Yeah, I, I would be in total agreement with that. And that I suppose that's one of the things we want is just to raise awareness that, of, that it exists and, and that it's happening. I, I would agree with everything you've just said there. Right, well, we have five minutes left. I know that Joe and Ros want to ask a question, so if you want to quickly ask a question. Oh, um, no, in five minutes I'll hear from somebody else. Yeah. Joe, no, Joe. This, th th this was just a very quick uh, comment to your point um, that uh, we can access um, wardrobe and costume at relevant theatres, and so we should. There have been many occasions when you have to describe something. You say, what is that? Or how do I do that? What are that? What what's going on here? And um, I think the onus is on us as describers to to track people down, and even in an email with bullet points, and say, I need to speak to head of wardrobe. I need to know. You know. Yeah. 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 Excellent, Megan. You do have a question quickly. Yeah, I just had a quick uh, comment. I just wanted to let you guys know that the, I first heard of you, I, I think it was before you were you, um, <laughs> when you were doing the phone box one. Mm. Um, I had a training with the folks over at Quiplash and they told the story about the, the phone box show, <laughs> which I was not familiar with and absolutely raved about that type of audio description. So this was an audio description training um, and they were raving about that type of audio description um, and they are uh, partially cited. 
So, <clears throat> and they are young people and they knew what they were going to when they got there um, and absolutely raved about it. And I have told that story over and over and over to every training that I have done. And it has become like a fish tail. And I don't know if you guys um, say that term, but like the fish has gotten bigger and bigger and you, you have gotten more and more amazing every time I've told the story. So I'm so glad to actually... <laughs> hear what you actually did because you uh -huh. kind of become something else in my mind. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that there are other people out there talking about the work that you're doing um, and have really enjoyed it. So that's, that's really great to hear. Thank you. Um, we have a few minutes left and I actually feel we could go on for like another hour and we might extend it in the future and sort of come back and revisit this because I think there is um, I think there's a lot more sort of discussion to be had, but in the last few minutes, Dan, do you just want to talk about where you go from here? Yeah, I, I just also want to say, like, I, I really hope we, like, we, I hope you don't feel like we're treading on anyone's toes or doing, like, all we, all our like purposes is just to, to try to try something a bit different. And I, I understood that comment from Jane that like vocalizers are also doing the same thing, and I, I think that's brilliant. Like. We're not trying to say that we're the only ones doing this and this is our thing. It's just like we're young actors who had an experience and thought we'd just like try and explore it a bit more. And like we don't want to offend or like anything. And we and I'm really happy to like get feedback from all you people who've been doing it for years and years and years. I think that is what we also need. Like, and we are such an open book to, to that. So like, please, like, if you have an opinion about anything we're trying or you, you think it's not right, like, or anything like, please like let us know but then if you do think things are good ideas like please take them and like work with them as well like it's not about us like just being the ones to do it we're not closing off we want like we want it to be better for everyone because in the end it, it's for people who are using the service and like if there's more options for people like that are visually impaired in theater I, I, I think that's great I, and I and, and I think they would they would feel that as well and if we can get bigger audiences in who use service whatever like it's just all about you know, it's about them, isn't it? So, like, yeah, that's the main thing. I think we, yeah. we, I think we understand as well that you know, not everybody is, you know, is gonna like it. Like, like with like with anything, you're mm. gonna get some people that are gonna go, yeah, I enjoyed it, but you know, I think that's that's the same with anything. But I think what we're trying to do is just trying to make it more accessible and inclusive for people who don't really come to the theatre who get a different experience. Yeah. So it's just yeah, exactly. It's just about exploring and exploration and growing it anyway so anyway any feedback whatever just like yeah. fly it our way if you like it if you don't whatever like we're really open to all of that and we we want like we want support and we want people to like you know so that's that's all i want to say on on that point of view so i hope you feel like that that's all good and yeah just going forward like we're a very young company we don't have a website we we're all self-funded at the moment through like grants and stuff that we've got so i suppose like going forward we want to we want to get some money from the arts council possibly to try and like get a website we want to get more we want to get more voices we feel like it'd be really good to have like a whole variety of different describers in regards to age ethnicity so we can pick so we can pick out which would be the best voice for each production so we want to grow our team and make it more diverse that's another thing we, we would like um and um uh, and yeah i suppose like we also want to explore like not just coming in and being descriptions describers, but also like going into rehearsals and being like audio description directors and directing like the actors to do the audio description, like with Road, like for example, on some productions, if that works for those particular structured plays, like we could do that. Or like there's other options as actors where we could be an unnamed member of the cast and be on stage the whole time and be describing through a phone box or as a security guard with a walkie talkie or, you know, like, loads of different ideas like that where we can actually we can actually be we can audio describe in every single production and and you know like and be there for all of it and yeah things like that we want to just like experiment with lots of different different forms of of it and how it could work in different ways within theatre so that's kind of like where we're where we're, we're driving to so yeah that that's it really so um yeah i hope I have to say it's been a fabulous session today and I want to thank everyone for coming but especially I want to thank Dan Parr and the Darren Cobbin for giving up their time today thank you. um 
and we will revisit this in the future. Um, and obviously, if anyone wants to connect with Dan or Darren uh, or hear the picture or have any comments, please get in touch and I'll connect to everybody. We'll be having a regular um, audio description session at the end of end of the month. So if you haven't part if you haven't participated in the doodle poll, please do, and we will arrange that. But we will pick up on this subject in the in the next few months. And thank you again to Dan and to Darren for attending today. Thanks for everyone for coming and mm -hmm. uh, thank you um, so much. yeah for being so involved. It's it's been really great to just have that discussion with all of you because I know you've you all you know put, so you all worked in the, doing this for years and years and years so it's amazing to hear what you guys have to think so yeah thank you all for coming and and um yeah thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody thank you. Cheers. yeah really inspiring fantastic cool. thanks all right bye 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 thank you thanks bye. Jim. Bye. okay bye thanks yay <laughs> Help. <laughs>so thank you uh darren and oh, we will keep well. in touch yeah. i was going to say thank you to dan as well but <laughs> he's off. gone off yeah oh, no that was really really interesting actually and it was really great to to get everybody's feedback actually and um and just yeah hear their opinions and, and we're opinion. trying to pick it up i think we had other things we could sort of discuss to go into and we'll pick it up in the future and perhaps give other people an opportunity to come in. Um, I've recorded it, so I will share the link out with everybody, and um, then other people can sort of get a flavour of it, and then we'll perhaps sort of uh, we'll arrange another one in the new year. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, Cheers. thanks a yeah. lot. Speak again soon. Nice to speak to you. Okay, all, all right. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.